from the floor of the CME Group on Monday, November 22nd. We're going to have a little spe special guest come on the show today, but I'm going to let him introduce himself. But I got him convinced to come on the show because he's a very knowledgeable guy and he has a lot of insight on what goes on in the marketplace. Cutting to the chase now, the S&P this morning and the NASDAQ on Globex on the weekend opened above their highs from Friday and they took them up higher and we saw a 1206 even print in uh, Globex E-mini for the S&P. Friday, top-notch trading was looking for the 120460 point of interest that just so happens to be a pivotal price today. The NASDAQ, on the other hand, sees an open up at 39, their high on Friday, but goes up 10 handles. So what happens this morning? The markets open up, take a quick dip. The S&P flies higher, but stops at 97.20. It doesn't even get up to its settled price on Friday. What comes up next? The NASDAQ takes everything out, gets above the 49 high that they made on Globex, and Prints a 12, excuse me, 2150 print, which was last week's high. And since those highs were made, that was the big curveball. Why did the NASDAQ go all the way up 11 handles above their high on Friday, and the S&P can't even get above their settle, but on Globex they did. So lots of stuff that doesn't make sense going on right now in the S&P. And because of what happened, I believe the S&P is gonna work lower. Because after they made their initial low 90 half, it's up to their high 97.20. They came back down, made a low, and now have refused to get back above their opening range of 92, even the 92.40. Some strange goings on here at the CMZ zone. As far as I'm concerned, the best bang for your buck are the bonds. I smelled a little bit of a twinge of an inverse relationship between these futures and the, and the treasury products right now. And just like the S&P and the NASDAQ opening up so much higher from Friday, well, that's exactly what the bonds did. They left plenty below, but a key 3A2 retracement level from their month high of 133 even to their low of 125.17 has found 128.12 at this time, high of 13. Since then, they have taken about 10 ticks in the favor. Top notch this morning, recommended shorting the 2812s. So far, I love the bonds. They've been more predictable. They're the best bang for your buck. But right now, I'm going to take off. I'm going to introduce my friend, Rich. So come on on, Rich. Hello, my name is Rich Canleone. I'm coming to you from CME Holdings Group Trading Floor. Um, I've known Tim for quite a while. I want to say some kudos to Tim because he's one of the better guys out there with respect to uh, numbers and retracements, uh, particularly on a daily basis, not only when it comes to the spoos, but also when it comes to the uh, fixed income markets, the uh, bonds particularly. Timmy's great for that kind of thing in the shorter term when you're talking about getting in and out and scalping a day trade. Uh, but I know that some of you guys out there a lot of times want to look at something for maybe a couple of days or maybe a week. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit about today. Um, I'm kind of in the same camp that Timmy is uh, with respect to the S&Ps drifting a little bit lower. Um, over the weekend, I'm sure you're aware, we had some news that should have been positive to the market uh, with respect to what was going on in Europe, Greece particularly. And uh, it's, not, uh, it's, it's not happening. What we're seeing is the S&P market particularly drifting lower, perhaps on a technical reason. And uh, one of the things that we keep an eye on, on a bigger picture, if you will, is the 200-week moving average. Timmy and I have talked about it uh, on and off, but at any rate, the 200-week moving average in the S&P market uh, would come in right around the 1194, 1194 and a half area. And we got just through that today, and it appeared from our standpoint on the trading floor that perhaps what they did is you got to it, perhaps uh, got all the stops out, and then the market drifted lower. I think at, at this point what we're looking at is that since the technicals have failed in that area, we might actually drift lower and go back to that two-week low that we have, which is around the 1171 area, and we got a good bounce from there. And I think that's what we're inclined to do. And sometimes what we see when we drift lower and we fail from a point up above, we go and revalidate a point below, which is where we really started to take off and made our move from. Uh, a little bit on the uh, bond side and on the 10-year side, I think what you have to do if you look at that market particularly, um, I would agree with Timmy on that as well in terms of the 30-year and the 10-year as well. And what we're seeing is now that the quantitative easing 
uh, talk has been kind of buy the rumor and sell the fact. Uh, we've gotten that off the table and we're starting to drift a little bit higher in price there, which means that we're drifting a little bit lower in yield. And if you take a look at the 30-year and the 10-year, and, and personally I keep an eye on the 10-year because a lot of the mortgages are actually written uh, and hedged with the 10-year, I think what you're going to see is we actually had a break in the 30-year and in the 10-year, which took you to a yield that was almost inside of 290. Now you're backing away in yield there because there's again a lot of talk about how much the Fed is going to uh, once again uh, buy uh, securities and so that yield is backing off a little bit which of course means that the 30-year price and the 10-year price is going to rally. What that could mean is that you're going to see the 30-year price again try to reclaim the 131 handle and in terms of 10-year yields you're probably looking at getting back inside of the 275 level which is a big key area. So that's my take on it. And uh, again, this is Rich coming to you from the CME Holding Group uh, trading floor. Thank you.